This final exercise of Module 2 will combine most of the MeSH goals learned so far to create a recursive pneumatic geometry. The following example starts with a MeSH plane inflated under pressure force. The resultant MeSH is subdivided further and subjected to pressure goal to create a tufted MeSH. You may open the grasshopper file provided in the resource folder to follow along. For this exercise, we need the mesh explode component, which is part of the mesh edit plugin library. In case it is missing in your grasshopper, you must install the mesh edit library. Locate the plugin in the plugin resource folder provided with this course. Copy all files from the folder. Go to File, Special Folder, and Components folder. This will open up Grasshopper Libraries folder in File Explorer. Paste the plugin into the Library folder. The last step is to check the properties of all the Grasshopper Assemblies file. These are the files with a green icon. Check if they are blocked. If yes, then unblock the files, and click Apply. If the Unblock option is not visible in Properties, then exit the Properties tab. Close every instance of Rhino and Grasshopper and restart. You should have access to the Mesh Explode function in Grasshopper. Start with the default mesh plane is the base mesh for this exercise. Bring the following kangaroo goals into the canvas. Anchor, show, edge length, and pressure. Connect the base mesh to show component and the edge length component with a length factor of 0.1. Connect the base mesh to the pressure goal. For the anchor goal, we will use a circular curve as the target to anchor the naked points. We will use a slightly different method to identify the target points. Start by identifying the naked edges of the mesh using the Mesh Edges component. Join the naked edges. and explode the result to get the list of vertices in order. Use point list to see the indices in order. Index numbers 0 and 40 are coincidental. Remove index 0 from the list using the cull index. Now, using the sort along curve function, sort the points using the target circle. For this, create a circle of radius 10, with the center point at world origin.
Connect the culled points list is input for points, and the target circle is the curve to sort along. Sort along curve will sort the points along the direction of the curve. Use point list to see the revised point index order. Now that the anchor points are ordered as per the target curve, we need to find their target points on the circle. Divide the circle into 40 segments, since we have 40 anchor points. Use the line two point component to visualize the connections. Connect the anchor and target point list to the anchor goal. Merge all goals, and connect with Bouncy Solver. Reset, and enable the solver. Use list item to isolate the first item from the output list, which should be the simulated mesh. This mesh has a circular boundary, and inflated in the Z direction. This is the first simulated mesh output of this exercise. To make it recursive, subdivide each mesh face further into smaller faces. Anchor the naked points of the newly subdivided faces, and inflate the mesh again, using pressure goal. We need two sets of data to do this. First is the subdivided mesh, and second is the list of anchor points. For this, we must explode each face into independent mesh, using the mesh explode component. The input mesh with 121 vertices, and 100 faces, has been divided into 100 meshes with 4 vertices, and 1 face each. Use kangaroo's refine function to subdivide the mesh, without changing the boundary. Set the refine input to 2. At this point, extract the naked vertices of the mesh, and use them as anchor points.
The next step is to join these 100 separate meshes into a single mesh using mesh join, mesh weld vertices, and unify normals components. This is the new base mesh for to be used for second kangaroo simulation. Copy the show, edge length, and pressure goal from the previous iteration, and connect the new base mesh into each input. Merge all goals, and connect with Bouncy Solver. Reset, and enable the solver. Use list item to isolate the first item from the output list, which should be the simulated mesh. At first, the mesh looks unchanged. Slowly increase the mesh pressure, and the mesh starts inflating between the anchored boundaries. If the mesh explodes due to excessive pressure, reduce the strength, and reset the solver. Once the solver converges, we get the recursively inflated mesh. At this point, you may repeat the process by exploding the new simulated mesh, subdividing, and inflating it again to get the third level of recursion. But we are going to stop here. As a cosmetic step to improve the visual output, Use Weaverbird's Catmull Clark subdivision to smoothen the mesh. Set it to level 02, and we have a clean and smooth mesh output. With this exercise, we conclude Module 02 of this course. Kangaroo Library offers some more goals that may be helpful in specific cases. However, for this course, the goals covered in this module are sufficient for various form-finding exercises. So try all the exercises covered in this module with variations.